So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the difference between the M350 and the M300. Let's check it out. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial drone pilot for the last five years, mainly focusing on drone photogrammetry. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the brand new DJI M350 and comparing it against its baby brother, the M300. So why don't we first start about the similarities between both of these drones so that you have a base understanding of what's actually being upgraded in the M350. So first and foremost, one of the most important questions is battery life. What are you getting over the M350 that the M300 does not have? And well, nothing. With both drones, you're getting about 55 minutes of real world flight time without a payload, depending on which payload that you fly on. In my experience, flying with this P1 camera on my M300 that I have, I'm getting about 46 minutes of flight time. When I'm flying with LiDAR, I'm getting anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. With the H20 series, whether it's the H20T or H20N, you should expect around 40 to, to 43 minutes as well. And then any custom payload that you put on the drone, your flight times may vary. Obviously, you have to deal with weather and winds and other atmospheric pressures that will affect your flight time. So if you're up higher in, let's say, Colorado, yes, you're going to get less flight times because of the density of the air. Compared to when I'm in Florida, I'm going to get better flight times down there because I'm closer to sea level. In terms of operating temperatures, whether you're in the Arctic or you're out in the desert, they both have the same operating temperatures between negative 20 degrees Celsius and up to 50 degrees Celsius. So still plenty of capability for these enterprise drones here. When it comes to payload support, because the M350 is built off of the M300 architecture, you're still going to get support for all of the existing payloads in the market. So I actually have the H20N mounted on the M350 here. I'm going to be putting the P1 on later on in the video so that we can do a basic mapping test. In addition, all of the payloads that work on the M300 also work on the M350. So just like I said, if you have a custom payload, Let's say you're flying a custom LiDAR sensor or an oblique camera system or a multi-spectral camera. If it's worked on the M300, it's also going to work on the M350 as well. And that's basically where the similarities end. So let's talk about the key differences between both of these drones. So one of the biggest key differences between the M350 and the M300 is the controller. And this guy right here triumphs the much smaller M300 controller that I have right here. So when I take a deeper look at what the M350 controller has over the M300. So the new control experience that you get from DJI on the M350 is using the DJRC Plus. This is the exact same controller that comes with the M30 and M30T series, but what's great is you can now use it with not only the M350, but also the M300 as there's backwards compatibility support with it. And just like with the M300, the WB37 battery, that external battery that you can continuously charge and hot swap within your controller, not only does it work on the existing M300 controller, but you can also do that exact same thing with the DJI RC Plus. It also has a dual operator support, just like the M300 with its smart controller that it had before. And in addition to that, you now get IP54 rating in the DJI RC Plus. So it's dustproof and waterproof, which allows you to operate reliably in bad weather. What's also great about this M350 paired with the DJI RC Plus is its enhanced transmission capabilities. So from the M300, you're going from the OcuSync Enterprise system now on the M350 has the DJI O3 Enterprise transmission, which supports triple channel, 1080p HD live feeds, offering a max transmission distance of 20 kilometers, which is a huge step up, especially when you're doing long range flights, extreme data capture on massive sites, which is definitely a huge added benefit of jumping to the M350 platform compared to the M300. In past projects that I've had to fly hundreds of acres, I would have to pick up and relocate somewhere else on site in order to get a better reception to the drone. Now with the enhanced capability of the DJI RC Plus tied in with the O3 OcuSync system with the M350, you can now expect to reach a larger range without having to relocate yourself on site, which the added benefit is just better efficiency in your data acquisition. What's also great about this controller is it's just so big compared to the much smaller screen that you get on the M300 smart controller. You have a whole lot more capability. It's so much brighter. Again, it's smoother controls. You have finer tuned controls on it and it has that hot swap battery system for all day operation, still leveraging the same WB37 batteries 
that you use with this smart controller alongside with your DRTK2 base station. Now, both smart controllers still use the DJI Pilot 2 app. So all of your mission planning that you've got accustomed to within DJI Pilot 2 on the M300 smart controller, you can still do on the DJI RC Plus within DJI Pilot 2. Now let's talk about the new night vision FPV camera that comes on the M350 compared to the M300. If you've ever done any data acquisition near the end of the day, you already know that trying to fly with that M300, that camera gets really grainy really fast. So similar to the H20N camera that DJI put out last year with that starlight capability in the camera sensor, you now have that in the night vision mode on the M300, which allows you to have better and safer operations at night, which is great for law enforcement and first responders that are operating bigger payloads on this drone, such as a thermal camera or a spotlight on the drone. Having that night vision camera allows this drone to be more capable than the M300 predecessor. So now let's talk about the batteries on the M350 compared against the M300. They both use kind of the same architecture, except you're going from a TB60 battery, which is what I have here, to a TB65 battery. Yes, of course, DJI had to change the battery. However, they are both interchangeable. So this TB65 battery that I have here, I can easily put it into the M300. And then same thing with the TB60 batteries. So if you're upgrading your system, you're able to keep the same batteries that you had on your old drone and put it onto the new one. There are some slight advantages to having the new TB65 battery as they have a little bit of a better design. They have these heat seat fins on it to allow for the battery to cool a little bit better while it's in flight. However, you still get the exact same capacity on both batteries. So you're not really losing anything there at all. However, my favorite upgrade about the new battery system is the battery case that you get to charge the TB60 batteries. So why don't we take a look at that? So here on the left-hand side, I have the BS65 intelligent battery station and on the right side i have the bs60 so this was the battery station that you got with your m300 very generic the one thing i didn't really like much about this case was this little flappy thing here that kind of protects the uh, ac port here which inhibited you from closing the case so i actually ended up taking this port out on my specific bs60 charging case but it still functions the same except you don't get to tell how you want the batteries to charge. They're just gonna charge to full, and in the settings of the DJI Pilot 2, you'd have to tell the batteries to go into storage mode after a certain amount of time. Up here, you can charge your WB37 batteries. But what I really love about the BS60 Intelligent case is it brings a lot of the features from the M30 series of battery charger and incorporates it into the new case here. So we have this switch down here that allows us to put it into storage mode, we have a quick charge mode, and then we have it to charge all the way up to 100%. So this quick charge mode will allow you to get your battery to 90% in roughly half of the amount of time that it would take to get up to 100%. This is if you're doing multiple operations in a day and you need multiple battery sets to charge. In addition, you also have your WB37 battery charger down here, but on this charging case, you have a little bit more control on how these batteries charge, as opposed to trying to set it up in the application within DJI Pilot 2. But also what I love about this case is the new wheels that you get with it. So very simple to close it up here, but then on the bottom here, we've got these wheels. So it's super easy for transport. Nice little spin around here. And you got a little handle that you can take in and out all around the airport here. Whereas with the BS60, it was just a super awkward case. And all you had were just these wheels on the bottom here so you flipped it up, you just had this, and then you can roll it on your way. And now this leaves us with the actual case that you get with the M350. In my opinion, this case is so much better than the super awkward case that you would get with the M300. So opening up this case here, you have four latches. And then there you go, your drone is right there. So you have the ability of putting a payload in here. You can also take out these foam inserts depending on what payload you have. Here is the DJI RC Plus Spark Controller. If you have two of them, you can put the second one here. Again, here's another spot for another payload. And then you have the drone yourself, which you can store two batteries. So the two batteries, the TB60 batteries on the drone, and then there's additional storage compartments down below. And then you also have your legs and then extra sets of props. So getting this drone out is pretty simple. We'll take out the legs here, put it in, get out our second one, put that one in, we'll make sure that we'll lock the legs in, and then you just simply bring the drone out. I like to hold the blades, and then to get the batteries out, you just take out these two 
foam compartments and then take your batteries out like so. And then when it comes to actually setting up the drone itself, they've actually made it pretty smart. So these two grooves right here will fit the drone perfectly. So if we go and place it right here, now you actually have a platform to work off of. Granted, if I were to close this case properly, it won't wobble as much. So then we'll just go ahead and bring out the arms like so, bring out this side. And then we also wanna make sure that we lock our boom arms in and then turning it around here we'll go ahead and put our batteries in just like so and we'll lock it in place and turning it back around again it's as easy as pressing the button on the top turn it on and now she's on and I always like to open up the props here before I fly technically I don't need to do this however I'm not really comfortable with the props being in, I'd rather just open it up so that it has an easier time taking off. But that pretty much does it for the overview of this M350 here. So why don't you say we go ahead and get this guy up in the air and have some fun. So I'm booted here on the DJI RC Plus. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter the camera view. Everything else looks fine to me here. And there we go. So that's the FPV camera that we're looking at right here. Here's the H20N camera. If we wanna flip between the different sensors, we can click on the side buttons here. So here's our infrared. We can look at our zoom capabilities as well. If we wanna, can move our gimbal as well, up and down. And then with our side buttons, we can zoom in. We just keep tapping, which this is actually the first time that I'm flying with the H20N. So this is all brand new to me, but man, this is a beautiful sensor. We're just gonna go ahead and put it on. The club are rolling and we go eat and they hold it off. I'm the first part of the day of the world. So let's go do a test flight. Kind of like me and we'll let me know that I'm really, 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 So I'm going to flip back on here to the H20N and I'm just going to zoom back out so we have our wide camera here. And as you can see, there's a top bar there that's showing me how much time I have left on the batteries. Again, I'm taking it off with about 75%. Um, there's a little bit of wind right now. It looks like about uh, three miles an hour, but it looks, uh, looks all fine to me. She definitely is big, I will say that. So I'm at this little complex over here. I'm uh, currently out in California. Shout out to Advexture for hooking me up with this M350 drone to try out. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about them towards the end of the video. So I'm gonna flip into our IR view here and I'm going to change this into IR red here. We also have the capability to zoom in on the infrared as well, which I think is pretty cool. There's a 4X of it, the intersection right here. You can even do 8X and 16X. So it looks like the uh, exhaust of that vehicle right there is pretty warm. This is, uh, this is pretty solid and I'm just moving the actual camera itself on the drone. I'm not moving the drone at all. But yeah, just hovering right now, I already dropped 10%, but it looks like I've only lost about a minute of flight. So if I start moving around here, I'm going to go back into the wide camera here. I'm actually going to go into the FPV and we can see all of the heads up display on here. So we can see our current flight speed. It's about 17 miles an hour, almost 18. We've got a wind speed coming from our west of about six miles an hour. And uh, that's just me doing some movements here, but yeah, everything is, uh, pretty fine and dandy right now. So super easy. We can see here in DJ Pilot 2 that it's already recognizing the P1 as the payload on here. Now this is not gonna be a full tutorial on how to do mission planning and mapping with the M350. This is just showing you how easy it is to go ahead and swap it out and start using existing payloads that you may already have. So we just go here into the flight route. I am connected to Wi-Fi. So when I go into this create route here, the map should pull up here. I'm actually going to change the layer over to satellite so I can see the area that I'm working on. We'll just do a very simple map here. So all you gotta do is just select the camera that you're flying with and we're going to do a flight height 
of 250 feet here. Keep it at auto settings. Upload our flight mission, hit start. And off she goes. So we'll let it do its thing. We'll let it land and we'll close out this video. This is really just a refresh on the Enterprise Series drone for DJI. They didn't really have to do much. The M300 is already a fantastic platform. This M350 just adds on top of that, adds some creature comforts, and just makes the drone a bit more capable for longer range flights, easier use with a bigger controller, and just a whole lot more reliability with its new transmission system, the night vision camera that it has built in, and even just some locking mechanisms that it'll warn you if you don't lock your boom arms properly. Really, this drone is easy to pick up and implement into any ecosystem that you already have within the DJI Enterprise system. So all the payloads still work, all the apps that you're familiar with still work with this drone. There really is nothing different other than it just being I'd say an M300 version too. So as this drone is on its way back to us, let me talk to you today about our sponsor, and that is AdVecture. Thank you AdVecture for lending me this M350 to test out today. But more importantly, if you guys are in the market for buying enterprise drones or really any drone in the market, whether it's an M3E or this new M350, AdVecture has you covered. Not only is AdVecture the biggest distributor in California, but they also have you covered with free shipping anywhere in the US. So regardless of what drone or accessories that you're buying, they've got you covered. In addition to that, AdVecture is a big supporter of first responders, which makes me like working with AdVecture even more because I'm a huge supporter of first responders. Be sure to check out the links in the description box below to learn more about AdVecture. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to keep the conversation going, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.